Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's May 1st, 2024 here and uh, it's my birthday. So uh, 63 wonderful loops around the the sun. Is that how we say it, Mike? <laughs> Something like that. Anyways, birthdays and uh, so happy to be here in community and sharing Dharma, which is um, a, a great love and passion uh, and much gratitude that um, I've had the good fortune <clears throat> or um, the blessing as uh, to have the Dharma cross my path in this life. And uh, so I'm mentioning it that it's my birthday because uh, tonight I wanted to share one of my favorite versions of a birthday song that comes from Sylvia Borstein, who is a beautiful Dharma teacher. Uh, I've shared her link down below here in the description so you can check that out. I have a couple of her books here. She has great titles for her books. Don't just do something, sit there, which is a, a take on the don't just sit there, do something. Instead, she says, don't just do something, sit there. And it's uh, it's kind of like a, a mindfulness retreat, kind of follows that form. But she writes really funny stories and very, very excessively written. Uh, and this is an excellent book. I highly recommend Um Sylvia Borstein's book, Pay Attention for Goodness Sake, and it's on the paramis, the 10 paramis or perfections of the heart. Um, and it's, again, very accessible and mm, just excellent, just excellent. She has a bunch of other books as well that you can see on her website and she has a blog, etc. Um <clears throat> this teaching that she offers in the form to the sound of the, I, I heard this years ago, I don't know how I came across it, good fortune, um, I really don't know how, and I can't find it again, or I would share it here for sure, but I searched, and it was just this kind of casual short interview that someone was doing with her in her kitchen. Uh, not the usual form. I, I haven't been able to find it again yet, but uh, and and then she shares this song and sings this song that just totally landed with, resonated with me and stayed with me um, long, long time. Uh, and so it's really a teaching on one of the aspects of wise effort, which is part of the middle path, the Eightfold Noble Path. The wise efforts to, there's four wise efforts to mm, cultivate what is skillful, when skillfulness has arisen to maintain it or help it really uh, take root and flourish. And then the opposite aspects when uh, to prevent the arising of unskillful mental states and when they have arisen which is often for most of us um, how to abandon them how to not keep um, fueling unskillful mind states and um, how to skillfully release them, uh, renunciate, abandon. <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's very, as Sylvia Borstein says, that it's very appropriate that um, this teaching is, she sings it to the birthday tune, you know, the happy birthday to you, um, that tune. Um, and she mentions that it's appropriate that it's a, to this birthday tune 
because we understand that we are reborn in each mind moment. In each mind moment, each thought process, intention and thought, there's a rebirthing uh, either wholesome, skillful, wise, onward leading, or rebirthing mm, into what could be called hell realms. Um, that's certainly been my experience anyways. I, I know this well, personally. Um, and and uh, we, we're still going to revisit with I I wanted to do this tonight, but uh, we're still going to come back. We did talk about karma, but we're going to talk about rebirth as well, maybe next week. Um, and so that's one way to look at rebirth is moment by moment. What is becoming, what is being created, arisen, born. And so in the teaching, uh, so as I mentioned, there's four wise efforts, but in particular, we're talking tonight about abandoning unwholesome mind states when they have arisen. So when we notice we're caught, we're hooked in, you know, all, all the everything, <laughs> anger, judgment, comparing, desire, greed, hatred, delusion, and all the flavors of that, which are quite infinite. <clears throat> when we notice we're hooked, caught in something that isn't uh, onward leading, wise, skillful, uh, interconnected, compassionate, all of these qualities, um, generous, patient, etc. When we notice this, uh, in the suttas, it, it's described as, um, as a carpenter. So when things were built, like a piece of furniture out of wood, and there wasn't nails, they would use a wooden peg to hold things together. And if the wooden peg is rotted or has has gone bad, has weakened, then a skilled carpenter would take a new peg of good strong wood and place it over top of the bad peg or rotted peg and hammer the new peg to drive out the old one and replace it with the new one. Hopefully that was a description you can picture. So the Buddha used this uh, um, image of driving uh, like a carpenter using a new peg to drive out an old one. Similarly, when we notice we're caught in a, I'll say, unskillful mind state, we, one of the wise efforts, there's several, is to replace the thought with its opposite. So if there's um my pad just went to sleep. If there is a ill will or aversion or hatred even, we would replace it with metta, loving kindness. May I be peaceful, may you be peaceful, may you be safe, you know if it's thoughts towards ourself or towards someone else. Um, if there's thoughts of greed or not enoughness, then we might replace it with thoughts of, of generosity or thoughts of um, gratitude. Mm, may I be aware of, you know, whatever is feeling uh, nourishing in your life, etc. So, um, I'll come back to that part. Yeah. 
So there's previous talks here on this YouTube channel on each of the wise efforts, and there's several other aspects, but um, we're just focusing on this one tonight, which is skillfully replacing uh, um, painful mind states. Now, this is not done in any way that looks like spiritual bypassing, where it's just like, everything's fine. I'm fine. It's all good. Whatever. It's all fine. Um, you know, white light, <laughs> just kind of uh, not really acknowledging what is painful. And so we always, always begin with mindfulness, just acknowledging uh, this is here. I'm really caught in it. This is, um, you know, few, feeling like it's fuel and it's burning and it's uh, growing. And so attending with care and compassion, wisdom comes first. And then if we see we're still hooked, then we might skillfully apply this antidote of replacing the thoughts. Yeah. I think that's all about that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to screen share mm, Sylvia's words to this song that I love so much. Let's see, screen share, and hopefully you can see it. I'll also paste it um, below uh, in the YouTube recording. <clears throat> okay. So you can uh, imagine this, and you could sing along. You're muted, or you're you're following us on the re recording. Uh, of course, the first stanza is my favorite because I do enjoy swearing. And also, I it just it's just so raw, <laughs> and a lot of people are maybe offended by it. Uh, so I'm acknowledging that as well. Um, for me, it really landed. <laughs> so let's see, birthday song. <clears throat> I am polluting my mind. It is turning into shit. I am mortgaging my happiness. So I'm vowing to quit. I am concentrating on what is good. I am mindful of who is kind. I am amplifying my blessing. So I am purifying my mind. May I feel protected and safe. May I feel contented and pleased. May my body be strong. And may I live with ease. Good. So Sylvia shared, uh, there's, a, I think, an article on this in Lion's Roar. I'll put the link. Um, where she says that she started with the, the second two parts, you know, just really cultivating what is skillful, wholesome, concentrating on what's good, aware of, you know, all of this part. And, and then she added that first part particularly addressing you know, the unskillful mind states. And and uh, I just love it. <laughs> and I use it a lot. It helps me a lot with my phone addiction when I'm when I'm uh, you know caught in some doom scrolling or or whatever, some viral hook where I'm down a rabbit hole. Uh, Sometimes awareness arises and I'm like, I am polluting my mind. It is turning to shit. I'm mortgaging my happiness, so I'm bowing to quit. And it just it has a lightness to it, but also a rawness that just helps me drop it when I'm when I can see that I'm hooked with something. And it was interesting this word mortgaging. I was like, how did what what is this? mean mortgaging I mean 
we are maybe familiar with the word mortgaging in terms of mortgaging, getting a mortgage on your property or something or home. Um, but I was like, what, what does she mean mortgaging my happiness? And uh, when I looked up the definition of mortgaging, it's defined as exposure to future risk. So great. <laughs> mortgaging my happiness. Right when when I'm fueling painful, afflictive mind state and heart state, heart mind and body, um, it's exposing me to a future risk. So true. And then it goes on to say, or constraint for the sake of immediate ad advantage. So, um, <clears throat> you know that. Uh, there's some sense of uh, getting something out of that in the immediate uh, and exposing exposing ourselves to future risk. You know, these things can really be strong, strong hooks. Uh, yeah, and then in the second stanza here where she's, you know, saying I'm concentrating on what is good. We've talked about this before in terms of negativity bias and uh, how it takes a strong intention, wise intention to turn towards what is good, to look for what is beautiful, joyful, loving, connected, nurturing, uh, generous, etc. This takes intention because it's a... Uh, mm, Often not what is um, promoted in society and in our culture to really look at what is good, especially if we're doom scrolling a lot. I'm mindful of who is kind. Many, many times, many times in, through the suttas, the Buddha talks about keeping wise and skillful company, that uh, being aware, are we... No, uh, we, we in another class this morning. We were talking about wise speech and how if we hang around with folks that are, you know, speaking uh, uh, aggressively or gossiping or um, mm, harshly, uh, this has a strong impact on us and our own inner speech and outer speech. And so uh, the Buddha talks often about supporting our intentions um, by keeping good company and this is uh, partly why we're here tonight to be with or whenever you're practicing with us to be with like-minded like-hearted folks with wise intentions uh, i'm amplifying my blessing this is interesting as well i mean I'm I'm totally interpreting Sylvia. She, she hasn't expounded a teaching on each aspect of this that I've heard. Maybe she has somewhere. Um, but uh, so apologies if I'm misinterpreting. But to me, what this means, I'm amplifying my blessing is again, acknowledging turning towards what is good. And, and uh, when wholesome, generous, uh, compassionate, skillful, interconnected heart-mind has arisen, we want to amplify it. We want to help that grow, help it stabilize. And also, like I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, gathering, what I see, um, for me personally, the great blessing of um, meeting with the Dharma in this lifetime. It brings to mind the one of the images in the suttas of the the rare blessing to have a human birth and even more rare to um, meet with the Dharma in this life is like if the whole earth was covered in oceans and there's one like a life 
circle, like a, a ring, what do you call those? Like a, a, a life ring um, thrown into the ocean. And once every, we'll, we'll, we'll say 100 years, um, a sea turtle comes up for air. And the odds of that sea turtle putting its head through that life ring, that one time it comes up for air, is how rare and precious it's said to be to have a human birth. Where we have, it's, it's considered more <laughs> advantageous than even a heavenly birth of uh, where everything is beautiful and perfect and content and safe and comfortable uh, because here we uh, experience dukkha and we also experience the ending of dukkha um, you know at times coming and going um, unless one's fully awakened and so this is a, a great opportunity for awakening yeah, and then you can see the last stanza is really meta phrases. May I feel protected and safe. May I feel contented and pleased. May my body be strong and may I live with ease. Ah, so good. That's the best birthday song ever. <laughs> so great. Sylvia. And it's catchy enough and, you know, you could just... And try to memorize one stanza at a time um, until you you get it and you can just let it let it roll through the day. Good stuff. I think that's it. Let me see. Yeah. So I think I'll stop the screen share. Um, I'll copy and paste it into the Zoom chat and put it uh, down below in the YouTube uh, recording as well. So you can have those words. <clears throat> yeah, so let's um, let's practice with these. Um, these wise intentions that are offered here in this teaching from Sylvia. <clears throat> so adjusting your posture or your space or your lighting as you need. So take your time to adjust and make sure you're supported and comfortable and upright. Uh, uh, that also applies for if you're practicing laying down or reclining, but just some sense of energy uh, through the body. See if you need any movement or stretch or touch before the body feels really ready to come into stillness. And then we really allow time to to meet ourselves in this present moment and just just checking in how is your energy tired wired anything else And how's the, how's the mind not needing to fix or judge, just knowing how, how it is in this moment? Is there 
dullness or heaviness, restlessness, harshness, busyness. And how is the heart? Is there grief? Is there joy? Is there hmm, any heartaches that are asking to be attended to? And how is the body? Is there any pain that's asking for care or adjustment? Is there any areas of numbness or disconnect? Just taking some time to have an overall check-in with the body. And then as we're attending with the bodily sensations, paying particular attention to the sensations of contact or ground, touch, support, really letting ourselves land in the center of this moment. Mind can pull us forward and out and away. And just feel the contact of ground and let the body be held. Let the whole being be held. Perhaps taking a few moments now to recall and check in with your, your values, your intentions that guide how you want to show up in the world. It may be the five precepts to undertake these trainings to refrain from causing harm, to not take what isn't freely given, to not speak falsely and harshly, to not cause harm through sensuality and sexuality, and to refrain from unmindfulness or heedlessness uh, from all of our various intoxications. And just see what, what your values, ethics are that are guiding your presence right now. And can you feel the sense of refuge, of resting into, of the support of those wise intentions that you have? Just like the support of the ground.
And now gently turning towards the metta bhavana practice to cultivate this seed that's in the garden of the heart mind that you want to grow. Seeds of well-being, of peace, of ease, of happiness. We all have this and we all wish for this to grow and expand and become deep and rooted. So using Sylvia's phrases here, silently repeating in the depth of your heart mind, may I feel protected and safe. May I feel protected and safe. May I feel contented and pleased. May I feel contented and pleased. Each time as you repeat that, it's, it's like a sun or water touching that seed. And you're just letting it, may I feel contented and pleased, touch into that deep place and let it flourish without the mind editing or judging. May my body be strong. May my body be strong. May I live with ease. May I live with ease. May I feel protected and safe. May I feel contented and pleased. May my body be strong. May I live with ease. And then as Sylvia invites, I am concentrating on what is good. So you could allow yourself some moments of reflection. What is good within your heart mind? What beauty or care or connection is in your life? in nature, in our animal companions, in our communities. I'm concentrating on what is good.
Acknowledging if we have safety, if we have some nourishment, some support, these prerequisites for practice. And I am mindful of who is kind. Allow the awake heart to open to, reflect on, invite in those who are caring, kind, compassionate. And they could be um, teachers that you haven't met, that maybe you've read or heard. It could be people from afar that uh, you haven't even met in person, but you are still aware of and receiving, acknowledging this kindness. Could be the kindness from unseen strangers or beings from our past. And then she goes on, I am amplifying my blessing, so I am purifying my mind. So allow the heart, body, mind to feel filled, infused, radiant, bright, acknowledging gratitudes, blessings that help to purify the mind. In this space, these moments of silence, to notice what grooves, what, what hooks, what mind states might arise. And is there anything that feels like it's not onward leading, skillful, wise, fruitful, so that perhaps the first stanza that Sylvia offers 
might be liberating. I am polluting my mind. It is turning into shits. I am mortgaging my happiness. So I am vowing to quit. And when the letting go happens, return to attending to what is skillful and good, kind, or the phrases, may I be protected and safe, content, living with ease, Replacing the old peg with the new peg. We are reborn in each mind moment and our intention and actions and wise thought condition what is being reborn. May I feel protected and safe. May I feel contented and pleased. May my body be strong. May I live with ease.
May all beings everywhere be protected and safe. May all beings everywhere live with ease. May all beings everywhere be free from dukkha. Thanks so much for joining me for this birthday practice. Nowhere else I'd rather be. And uh, may you be well.